So let's say we've drawn our cumulative frequency curve and now we want to estimate some values. So we want to get the median, the lower quartile and the upper quartile from this data. So the median value, so what you're looking at is the cumulative frequency and then for the median value you're looking halfway up that line. So from 0 to 50, halfway is 25. Okay, so when you're looking at grouped frequency, you take the frequency, the total frequency, and divide by 2 to find the position for the median value. Okay, now there's no consensus on uh, whether you are going to add 1 to that and divide by 2. Generally, uh, when you're working with grouped frequency, especially with a large set of data, adding 1 and dividing by 2 and just dividing by 2 will get you very similar values. Okay, So it really won't make that much of a difference. If you're worried about kind of which one will be acceptable in the exam, I would try to stick with, um, for grouped frequency, just dividing by n, uh, dividing by 2, sorry, okay? So again, the frequency dividing by 2. So 50 divided by 2, 25. Go along to your line, your curve rather, and then read off straight down. Okay, I'm getting somewhere, something like 8 for my median. And then for the lower quartile and upper quartile, once again, uh, some people might go add 1 and then divide by 4. But because it's group data uh, and there's a, a lots of bits of data, um, I, you can just divide through by 4. So 50 divided by 4 is 12.5. So 12.5 is going to be something like this value here. OK, so it's about 7. And then the upper quartile is going to be three quarters of the way up. So that'll be uh, 37.5, so somewhere around about here. OK, I'm getting about 10 for that. OK, so obviously as, you re as you're reading off those values, um, you're trying to be as accurate as you can, but it's based upon the curve that you've drawn. So as long as you've drawn your curve like so, and then you're reading off um, accurately from your curve, you might get slightly different results to somebody else, but at the end of the day, it's a ballpark estimated figure. So um, don't worry too much if it's like 0.1 off or something like that. Okay, And that's how we can find those three values. Now from that, you could then draw a box and whisker diagram seeing as you've got the key bits of information. Um, so if we use the same scale, then we could draw a box there. OK, so median value. Uh, that's slightly further along, isn't it? There we are. That's a bit better. OK, so uh, lower quartile, median, upper quartile. And then you need the whiskers. Um, so remember, uh, we could draw them from 5 up to 14, OK, because they're the uh, longest bits, furthest that we know about, sorry, to 5, something like that, OK. Um, if you were thinking about outliers-wise, uh, whether you should draw it to the, that uh, distance, um, well, uh, the upper quartile take away the lower quartile is 3. So the upper quartile plus 1.5 times 3. Um, so let's just check that. So 10 plus 1.5 times 3 would take us up to 14.5. We know that there's no value beyond 14. So there's no point drawing the whisk up to 14.5. And then the lower quartile, take away 1.5 times the interquartile range, gets you down to 2.5, OK? But we know that there's no value less than 5, so it doesn't make sense to draw the uh, whisker that far down, OK? So if, if you were um, worried about that, 
then that would be perfectly fine as your box and whisker because it's even better than including the outlier boundaries because you can easily see that 25% of the data is in there rather than drawing it something like that and then saying, well, 25% of the data is in there, in that range, when actually it's all compacted into that range. Okay, so it's better uh, the way that we've done it using the end values from the groupings. Um, so that's how you can draw the box plot from the cumulative frequency curve.